Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we're going to be joined by a special guest. He's the executive chairman at CleanSpark, and this is a company that I personally hold, I've been adding to over the last couple of weeks. We've seen a huge run in the price of Bitcoin over the last month, and I think a lot of these miners are really gearing up for a major run in the back half of 2023. Now we've got a lot to go through in today's video, but before we do, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's a big help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let me know in the comment section below if you're currently holding shares of CleanSpark, how you think their business or mining operations stack up to some of the other players, and what your thoughts are on this company for the back half of 2023. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right, back by popular demand, we have Matt Schultz, he's the executive chairman of CleanSpark. This is a company I'm personally invested in, super excited about the Bitcoin space in general. Matt, thanks so much for coming back and joining us again on the channel here. Hey Bryce, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having us. Appreciate all the support you've given us. You bet. And and we've got a lot to go through. I know you just got back from London, so we'll get right into it. Before we do, I wanted to give a shout out to the video sponsor, which is Moomoo. There's some information in the video description below, so go in, take a look, you guys. Definitely worth your time. Back to the video though, Matt, first question for you. For those of us who maybe missed our initial uh, conversations on the channel. Can you give me a quick intro on yourself and a little bit of an introductory to CleanSpark as an organization? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so CleanSpark was really born out of the energy space. And with with Bitcoin, you know, the, the, the biggest expense in mining Bitcoin is obviously the energy component. Yeah. So we built, uh, designed, patented and deployed um, microgrid solutions, which are, you know, effectively decentralized um, little energy systems that we deployed on military bases or commercial and industrial clients, and even with, with embassies around the world. Okay. And because of that relationship or that, that business knowledge, we understood how, how the grid really interacts with businesses. And as a Bitcoin miner, you have an opportunity to partner with the grid to buy surplus capacity, but then also to participate in demand response programs. So we initially were, were tasked with designing an energy solution for a Bitcoin mining facility. We put out a press release back in January of 2018. Mm -hmm. And then we had a second opportunity in 2020. And rather than um, sell them an energy solution, we ended up acquiring a data center. So we're we're now one of the top three largest North American um, Bitcoin mining companies. Um, and I'm very proud to say we're, depending on the metric you look at, either number one or number two in overall efficiency. Perfect. Yeah, and we're going to talk about those efficiency metrics. We were talking a little bit before off camera about how important that's becoming. And what's so interesting to me, it's ironic, but uh, there was so much skepticism with the Bitcoin mining space in terms of their energy demand and how much energy they're pulling off the grid. And now it's completely flipped. And so many of these companies are seen as an asset and an insulator to the grid. So it's really been interesting to follow that kind of progression. Um, now, Matt, the big question, I know a, a couple of people have uh, brought this up in the comments section. CleanSpark recently announced a massive $145 million expansion deal. Um, effectively, I think 95% increase in hash rate or something to that too, and effectively doubling your hash rate. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about this news and what it means for CleanSpark? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's there's a measurement of how efficient a Bitcoin mining fleet is, and they measure that in joules per terahash, and you can substitute the word joules for watts. Okay. So when you look at watts per terahash consumption, it's a really important metric since the biggest the biggest expense in mining Bitcoin is the energy. Mm -hmm. So globally, the fleet average of all Bitcoin miners is around 45 watts a terahash. Um, CleanSpark is right now about 30 watts a terahash, so significantly lower than the than the global average and, and much lower than many of our peers. What this acquisition of these miners does effectively is reduce that energy consumption even further. Okay. The rigs that we purchased were S19 XP series. So there are 140 terahash rigs 
they consume about 21.5 watts per terahash. What that will do is make CleanSpark number two or number three at the end of the year as far as overall hash rate. We've given guidance to the market. We're very comfortable that we'll now meet our, our guidance target of 16 exahash. But most importantly, it will put us among the top two most efficient fleets in the world. Mm -hmm. Why that matters is we're about a year and two months away from the halving, which means that the Bitcoin reward um, is is cut in half. So that's that's a double edged sword because many of our peer group, even some of the publicly traded miners, still have efficiencies, you know, forty watts of terahash plus, and it's it's going to prove to be very difficult to operate a fleet in the environment post having unless you know Bitcoin goes on a massive tear. Yeah. Um, so 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 by focusing on efficiency. What that does is that gives us certainty about our operational efficiency post having. You know, there, okay. there are variables that you can't control. We we feel very comfortable about um, our our access to energy. Um, you know, I think Zach has disclosed on on some recent stuff that we're you know we're seeing energy rates in the one point eight to two point four cents per kilowatt hour, and we we use predominantly nuclear energy. So yeah. You know, when, with, with access to that type of power, even understanding the volatility in the Bitcoin network, post having there's an expectation that difficulty is going to drop because there are many fleets that simply won't be able to operate. So we're we're excited to be on the leading edge between now and having what that basically does is ensures that, you know, we're maximizing the profitability and, and the value for our shareholders. Gotcha. Okay. And we've talked about that having event coming up in 2024 on the channel previously, but I think that's important. Traditionally, we have seen appreciation in Bitcoin price leading up to that event. Um, but as we know, history doesn't dictate the future. So it's, it's important to have that safety net, Matt. And I think that's, that's crucial that you guys call that out. Um, not to mention the 16 exahash per second, which is which is phenomenal. Um, and now you mentioned some comments from Zach. So I'm going to touch on that for a sec. In a recent press release, uh, he noted that bear markets really do provide a lot of opportunity um, for specific companies like CleanSpark. Can you expand on exactly what that means outside of kind of this recent purchase, which we just talked about? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, hit rewind for 14, 15 months and Bitcoin mining machines are selling in the 80 to $100 per terahash price range. Um, many of our peers jumped into massive, you know, $100 million plus commitments for future deliveries of miners. Mm -hmm. We instead chose to start to use our Bitcoin and sell it in that $50,000, $60,000 price range and invest in more infrastructure and facilities. So as a result, and, and I'm going to back up and give you a little color on why we did that. You're very astute in your analysis of where Bitcoin prices go surrounding a halving event and the volatility. What we looked at is that epic bull run that Bitcoin had been on up to sixty nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars and, and understood that, you know, it doesn't always just go up. So there was likely to be a pullback. But more importantly, we utilize different analysis tools. Um, the Henry Hub, for example, gives us natural gas future pricing that goes out years in advance. And we saw that there was likely to be a significant increase in the cost of energy. And then with, you know, Marathon, Riot, some of the, the, the big players in our space ordering, you know, in excess of a billion dollars worth of mining rigs, it was clear that global hash rate difficulty was going to increase. Yeah. So, so understanding that, we instead decided to wait and be patient. That bear market came and those rigs that were selling for 80 to $100 a terahash came down into a much more kind of a sweet spot, if you will. Uh, in February, we announced a purchase of 20,000 of the new Bitmain S19X uh, J Pro Plus, okay. which those are 122 terahash machines uh, consuming about 27 watts of terahash. And we paid $13.25 per terahash. And crazy. Just, if I could take a little bit more of a tangent. A lot of companies put huge deposits to buy machines back in 2021 and 2022, yeah. and then they were unable to buy to take delivery of those machines. So Bitmain, rather than saying, hey, you lost your money, they issued those companies coupons, and the coupons were for a discount against future minor purchases. It, it didn't allow credit. You couldn't use it for 100% of the purchase, but you could use it to offset, but they were time certain. 
Many of them expired in February and then March and then April of this year. So what Zach and the team did is they went into the market and started buying coupons for pennies on the dollar and then used those coupons to offset percentages of the purchase price of new rigs. So we'll have, and, and I believe I can say with certainty, we'll have the lowest cost per terahash of a highly efficient fleet of any miner publicly traded in North America or, or likely anywhere else. And, and to take that a step further, you know, Zach and I just returned from London and it was interesting. There's a large miner that we met with there that is, is domiciled in the Middle East. And, and they, they made the comment they were somewhat disappointed because we set the floor with the, the price per terahash on this most recent XP order at $23 per terahash. So I think what it comes down to is the lowest cost on CapEx. I mean, that, that order of S19 J Pro Pluses, we ran the numbers and with a $25,000 Bitcoin and five cent power, they paid for themselves in less than 300 days. That's why. Now that, now that the Delta came down on XPs, we jumped in full boat, about 45,000 of those. So we'll have a, a, an ultra efficient fleet um, that we paid less than, than I think anybody else per terahash. We own our own facilities. So we have the ability to work in partnership with the utility. And, you know, as, as Bitcoin, you, you know, you mentioned Bitcoin was kind of painted in a, in a negative light that, hey, it's this big energy pig. You know, we flipped that script in Georgia buying predominantly nuclear power. Not only that, we're partnering with the city. So the cities make, you know, a fraction of a penny for every kilowatt hour we buy. But then we also pay sales tax on that energy. Yeah. And those sales tax revenues go right into the city. So, you know, you think about it, we spend in, for example, in Washington, Georgia, a town of 4,000 people, we're spending a million dollars or more a month in electricity. And, and there's more than $100,000 in sales taxes going right back into the community, benefiting schools and parks and libraries. And then the city also makes a little a little percentage of revenue on the electricity that we buy. And what, what that's doing is it's enabling the cities and, and MEAG, the, the generation system as a whole, to sunset less efficient energy sources, to profit from the relationship with us. And so we're kind of you know, I, I, I don't want to sound arrogant, but we've kind of become a darling in some of these small cities because we're really contributing meaningful employment, high tech jobs, yeah. um, revenue going back into the cities and, and uh, you know, contributing positively to the security of the Bitcoin network. Yeah, it's all phenomenal stuff. And I know you've talked about those partnerships with the local communities in the past, but it really is meaningful and and reshaping kind of how people look at this industry. Um, the other thing I was going to mention there, Matt, is you guys got to give yourself a bit of credit just as a management team for the foresight, understanding the, the cyclicality of the uh, Bitcoin bull run there, um, timing these purchases, buying the coupons. Like this is the kind of stuff that I, I believe that your previous experience in energy systems and grids and stuff really lends itself to. So um, I was saying to Matt before the interview, this is a company I personally hold, I've been adding to, and that's exactly why is, is because of those decisions and, and foresight from the team. So um, thanks for shedding some light there. Now, speaking of new opportunities, growth, I know you've got some construction expansion going on at your Washington, Georgia location. Can you give us a quick update on that, Matt, as well? Yeah, so 50 megawatt expansion. Um, that facility will be 86 megawatts when fully deployed. We bought those 20,000 S19J Pro Pluses that are being delivered. We, we got our first shipment of those this week, so okay. really excited about that. So we're racking and stacking those. Um, the city is on schedule. The building construction is on schedule. Um, we're going to have a Bitcoin drop-in um, for, our, for our executive team and, and all of our staff. And there'll be some pictures and video that we'll share on our corporate um, social media. And you'll see okay. you know, some of the buildings are complete, others are, are nearing completion. So that's 50 megawatts. And then in Sandersville, the facility we bought from Mawson Infrastructure, mm -hmm. there's 150 megawatt expansion. And, and Gary Vaccarelli, our CFO, is down there with Scott Garrison, who is our biz dev guy. And they were sending me pictures and videos this week of the, the the progress on the substation to provide that additional 150 megawatts. So from everything that we're seeing, we're, we're right on schedule. Um, you know, the market's been really starting to appreciate. I think the fact that yeah. we, we, were, we were flying under the radar, to be honest, Bryce, I think 
there was a disconnect that people kind of still saw us as a as an energy play and and maybe didn't realize that we're you know we're the third largest as far as bitcoin production and hash rate but we're number one as far as efficiency if you look at, at hash rate utilization so I, I think that you know seeing that credibility and understanding the, the really disciplined capital management strategy that we've taken i i, I think you're going to start to see that gap continue to to close and, and we're really excited for what the future holds yeah, those are really the opportunities we look for on the channel here. And, and I definitely would agree with you that there was a bit of a miss by the, the market here on this one. Um, now, I'll leave a link in the video description to your company website. When we post this, uh, we'll throw it up on our Twitter and I'll, I'll reach out to Clean Spark and yourself, Matt, so people can follow you on those social media platforms. But you did touch on one metric. I know you shared this recently on your Twitter feed. Uh, it's called Bitcoin Hash Rate Realization or uh, Bitcoin hash rate realization rate. Um, can you give us a little bit of insight on what that means from an efficiency standpoint? Yeah, so if you look at last month, we, let's use February since um, I, the Miner Mag did a, a, a kind of a chart and a graphic on that. Okay. So CleanSpark talked about the fact that we had, you know, 6.5 X or 6.7 X hash per second deployed. Yeah. You look at then the Bitcoin that's produced and they can figure out that metric of how much of that hash rate that's deployed is operational and for what period of time. And so for the month of February, CleanSpark was 96%. That w What that means is all of our rigs, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're operating 96 plus percent of the time. Gotcha. And <clears throat> then we, do, we disclose what that Bitcoin production is. So you compare that to some of the larger peers that have more hash rate but their hash rate, the realized hash rate um, on that metric is in the 70 or 80% range. What that comes down to is being completely vertically integrated, being a proprietary miner. It's, it's our team of guys that are operating those facilities, that are operating the machines, that are deploying the machines, that are providing the maintenance. And, and everybody on our team is incentivized to increase that efficiency. And I, I told you last time we spoke, we kind of gamified that. And there's yeah, I was going to bring that up. Competition and, and, and so, you know, to see 96 and, and, you know, recently we're seeing this week as high as 99%. It's just a testament to the people that we have on the ground. Um, if a machine goes down, if a transformer goes down, if switchgear goes down, there, there's there's somebody standing by to get that back up because it matters to them. And it's yeah. it's incentive, it's not punitive, and it's fun. And, and you know, the team that we have is is, is really, um, it, it, it's a testament to what they do, the, the, the fact that that efficiency is so high. Yeah, for sure. And I know we've talked about that, the gamification, and, and it definitely adds to the corporate culture. Um, going off script, how many people do work at CleanSpark right now, approximately? We're about 130 total. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So it's it's rapidly growing. We uh, we just had an executive meeting in Vegas before we left uh, for London and, you know, uh, made the comment, Zach was, was commenting that, you know, in, in that meeting, we were we were representing employee 001 and 002 and <laughs> to now have 130 people that, you know, just some amazingly talented, very, in, you know, brilliant um, individuals that, that have chosen to join our team and, and kind of jump into our vision and support the Clean Spark way. Um, you know, the pride that our company took, we, we published our first sustainability report in partnership with NASDAQ. We're the first of the majors to do that because we feel like, you know, not to get into the whole virtue sign signaling on ESG or, or what your opinion of that is regardless, but you know, those three individual stacks, you know, the environmental, social and good corporate governance go hand in hand. And whether it's it's labeled ESG or just good business practices, the fact that we took that seriously, um, that we, we, we disclosed that sustainability report and, and that we, we publicly stated that those those three individual metrics matter substantially to us. Yeah, um, it, it really does. It, it, it comes down to just the clean spark way and the, the culture that's been built in. And, and there's a there's a great deal of pride to be, you know, one of the founders of a company that has people that are so passionate and care so greatly for what we do in the in the communities in which we do it. For sure. Yeah, no doubt. It, it's a really a great story to see. Um, so congratulations on that. And to wrap things up a little bit, Matt, uh, what would you say, aside from everything we've covered, I know there's obviously a lot going on and a lot of catalysts, but what's still on the horizon for the back half of the year here that uh, 
viewers or um, investors should keep an eye out for? So, you know, we've, we've disclosed clear line of sight, 50 megawatts coming online May, June in, uh, in Washington, 150 megawatts by year end in Sandersville. I can tell you that Zach and Gary and the rest of the executive team are not sitting back just waiting for things to close and, and, and content with where we are. With difficulty continuing to increase, we're seeing a ton of opportunities. And there are, there are Bitcoin miners that, that won't make it post having. Mm-hmm. And so we're seeing additional assets come for sale. Um, we're not really interested in, in less efficient fleet. You know, we have the state of the art most efficient right now. You know, us and, and, and Marathon Digital will have the most efficient fleet in the world. Um, but, but what we're seeing is infrastructure opportunities. Okay. Um, with the recent improvement in Bitcoin price, um, there's a little bit more activity in the space, but you know, as, as you've seen, we're, we've been by far and away the most active from a standpoint of M&A. Yeah. And I can tell you that that's not likely to slow down at any point soon. Okay, great. Well, that's a good little tidbit there and we'll keep an eye out and probably have you back on when, when and if that uh, develops. So closing thoughts, uh, anything we missed? Where can people find out more information or just a general kind of uh, final thought or word for us here? So, you know, we've, we've, we've taken a lot of pride in our sustainability report. And so we've got a little contest that's going on on all of our social media about fun facts about clean spark and its efficiency. Okay. We've got a great team of people that keep try to keep all of our investors and shareholders updated. So our social media is pretty active. Um, and, and I'm also really happy to say that, you know, over the course of the past two weeks, you know, our stock has been really appreciating and I get feedback from NASDAQ and what we're seeing is a rotation into our security from institutional holders, even more so than before, um, ETFs, uh, you know, larger players. So we, we, we feel really comfortable and excited about that because we believe it'll add continued stability to the share price as, as we hit our targets and raise them and hit them again like we did last year. So sure. just keep your eye on us, you know, stay in touch. We're really active on our IR side. If you have a question, if you're a shareholder, please feel free to reach out, IR at cleanspark.com. Um, you know, we, we pride ourselves in making, uh, being available um, and making sure that if you have a question, we do our, our very best to answer it. And you know, really appreciate the opportunity to be on your channel, Bryce, and you know, appreciate the support you've always given us. And, and you know, thank you for the vote of confidence in being a shareholder. You know, I, I personally don't take that lightly, so um, it does mean a lot. Most definitely. Yeah, I appreciate your time as well, Matt. It's music to my ears. I, I've been feeling like the institutional guys and some of the bigger players are starting to move into this sector, just looking at the volume. And obviously that's when you start to see the the real moves in share price. So I think we're still in its infancy. I've been preaching that on the channel for a long time. I think we're, we're due for a big run here in the next uh, couple quarters for Bitcoin. And Definitely happy to be on the ride with you. So thanks for your time. Uh, You guys, if you're still watching at this point, make sure you hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, McNally Money. If you have any questions for Matt or the team at CleanSpark that we didn't address, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'm sure we'll have uh, the guys back on here in a couple months and we can add that to our list. So thanks again for your time. Have a great rest of your day.